morning. Does God speak to us today? Can the voice of God really be heard? Well, before answering those questions, let's look at someone who clearly heard the voice of God. His name was Elijah. Turn with me in your Bible to 1 Kings chapter 19. As we do that, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you for this time, this opportunity to enjoy fellowship with you as we seek to engage you through your word. Father, you speak to us primarily through your word, and Lord, we speak to you primarily through prayer. And Lord, may we have this conversation May we have this dialogue. Father, we pray that uh, as we commit this time to you, that the Holy Spirit would speak to us. The Holy Spirit would give us uh, affirmation, give us conviction, and give us the grace to act where we need to, that we might walk with you faithfully, that we might know an intimate relationship with you and that we might be effective servants for your kingdom. Father, we commit this time to you for your kingdom's sake and in the name of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and for his sake, amen. So does God speak to us today? Can the voice of God really be heard? Well, first of all, in order to hear God, you must move toward him. If you're in 1 Kings chapter 19 with me, if you haven't, turn there. And let's look at those first 11 verses there for, for a moment as we begin. In order to hear God, you must move toward him. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, also how he had executed all the prophets with the sword. And then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, So let the gods do to me, and more so, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life and went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he prayed that he might die and said, It is enough. Now, Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father's. Then he lay and slept under a broom tree. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. And then he looked, and there by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came back the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat because the journey is too great for you. So he arose and ate and drank and he went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights as far as Horeb, the mountain of God. And there he went into a cave and spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? So he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. And then he said, Go out and stand on the mountain, before the Lord. Because of Jezebel's threat, Elijah ran for his life. He ran away, moving away from everybody. He left everything behind him. The prophet wanted to be left alone. He wanted to sleep. He wanted to forget everything he had suffered and everything he still had to worry about. 
Elijah had just had great victory up on Mount Carmel with the, the taking down the prophets of Baal, 400 something of them, and God bringing fire down from heaven to take up the altar, the, the sacrifice in the altar. And after that miracle, receiving a threat from Queen Jezebel, Elijah just ran because of Jezebel's threat. Well, let me ask you a question. Are you running away? Are you running away from responsibility? Are you running away from accountability? Are you running away from service? Are you running away from commitment? Are you running away from God? Elijah ran away literally, physically exhausted and emotionally spent. And God provided for his physical needs. There was the bread and there was the water. But did you notice something? Elijah never acknowledged the angel. So often we see only the provision and we miss the provider. Simply going back to what we were doing. He got up, he ate the food, and he went right back to sleep. Never even acknowledged that the angel had come. Never even acknowledged that anything was provided for him and how it was provided. Elijah never acknowledged that angel. So, so often we see only the provision. Verse 7 records that the angel of the Lord provided for Elijah. God personally went to where the prophet ran to take care of him. He didn't rebuke him. He didn't condemn and he didn't deal with any of Elijah's issues. God provided something material, not spiritual. And God did it twice. He did it twice. When you see the a reference to the angel of the Lord, the angel of the Lord in the Old Testament, it is a pre-incarnate appearance of Jesus Christ, a Christophany. We see it on many occasions. Well, we saw it in the burning bush, in the wilderness. We see it um, when the three men visit Abraham, when they're Two angels go on to Sodom and Gomorrah, and the other angel stays. When Joshua has, uh, before the battle of, of Jericho, the captain of the army of the Lord, the angel of the Lord, every, uh, every one of these and, and many more, these are all appearances of Jesus Christ, appearances of God before Jesus is incarnate. The second time, a meal came, but this time it came with a message. A journey was coming up. God provided for his needs for a purpose. There was a reason. Look at verse 8 again. So he arose and ate the drink, ate and drank, and he went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights as far as Horeb, the mountain of God. The word spoken to Elijah, arise and eat because the journey is too great for you. Reveal that more was said that we don't get to hear. Notice something. When Elijah ran away, it was not to anywhere in particular. Just away. He just, he just wanted to get away from it all. All the stress of it, the, the, the threats from Queen Jezebel, the stress of the whole uh, encounter up on Mount Carmel. Just, he just wanted to get away. Just wanted to be by himself. But now, instead of just getting away as he runs, he's now traveling to somewhere specific, to Horeb, the mountain of God. But the prophet, he wasn't just going sightseeing. 
Verse 11 tells us why he went there. Verse 11, it said, then he said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. Why was he there? Elijah was moving toward God. He may not have known at the time of the instruction, but Elijah had a divine appointment coming up. He was going to have to engage God. And so if you're, if you're going to hear from God, you need to be moving toward God. You need to move toward him and not be running away from him. Secondly, in order to hear God, you must listen for him. Look at the second part of verse 11 down to the first part of verse 13. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. And so it was, when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. The Lord demonstrated three signs of his presence to Elijah on that mountainside. There was wind with such force that it ripped the rocks out of their place. God was not in that great show of power. There was also an earthquake representing a, presenting a definite indication that God was there, but he was not in that great vibration. Of the earth. There was a fire on the mountain. God had shown himself in fire. Remember Moses in the, the burning bush, which occurred at that, but God was not in the fire. God put on quite a show for the prophet, but he wasn't speaking to Elijah in any of those signs. Because that's what we would like, isn't it? We like God to speak in a loud and powerful and, and dynamic way to us. Wow, that's God speaking. But he wasn't speaking to Elijah in any of those signs. Instead, it was with a still, small voice. What does this say? We look for God in the spectacular and we often miss him in the silence. Sometimes God is so subtle, no one sees him or hears him. Sometimes God speaks in quiet ways, in ways we don't expect. Yeah, we expect the wind. We expect the earthquake. We expect the fire. But we don't expect the quiet voice. That's what happened with Elijah. Listen, God seldom speaks in noise and commotion. He got Elijah's attention with a still, small voice, a whisper. It wasn't very dramatic. Not the stuff of Hollywood, but effective. Yeah, it was effective. A pastor once asked, has God ever spoken to you audibly? And he replied, no, no. It's much louder than that. Elijah heard the voice of God. Do you? Do you hear the voice of God? Do you want to hear God speak to you? Well, let me suggest. If you want to hear God speak to you, let me suggest that you do three things, these three things, in order to prepare yourself. Not to hear God speak, but to prepare yourself to hear God speak. First of all, get in a place where you can hear God. If, 
If we want to hear from God, we need to put ourselves in a place where God can best get through to us. For Elijah, it was on the mountain of God. Richard Foster once wrote, in contemporary society, our adversary majors, our adversary the devil majors in three things, noise, hurry, and crowds. If he can keep us engaged in muchness and manyness, he will rest satisfied. To hear from God, we need to get away from the busyness, the noise, and the hectic pace of life. Where is your place of quiet? Where is your mountain of God? Where is the best place that God can break through to you? Find a quiet place for silence and solitude. Take advantage of the little places of quiet that fill the day. Drinking your coffee in the morning, sitting in, a, in rush hour traffic, or a place away from the routine, maybe in the park. But get in a place where you can hear God. Second, become still and listen for God's voice. Look at the, sec the second part of verse 13, down 14. Suddenly a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts because the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. Often the issue is not whether God is speaking, but whether we're being still enough, quiet enough to hear. He can be heard if we'll listen. Listening for God is a spiritual discipline. It's a kind of, it's a special kind of listening where you listen with your heart as much as with your ears. There's an old proverb that says, the man who opens his mouth closes his eyes. Maybe it should be revised to add that the man who opens his mouth closes his ears too. So become still and listen for God's voice. Get in a place where you can hear God. Become still and listen for God's voice. And third, be ready to obey instructions you receive. Look at verses 15 down to 18. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, anoint Haziel as king over Syria. Also you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi, as king over Israel, and Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of abel Mahola you shall anoint as prophet in your place. It shall be that whoever escapes the sword of Hazael, Jehu will kill, and whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. Yet I have reserved, reserved 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. Elijah's journey wasn't just a retreat to meet God. It also included a trip back to responsibility and service with an assignment. God never brings us face to face with him for us to stay there. In the same way, we 
we look in the mirror before we face a new day. An encounter with God is preparation for service. God wasn't finished with Elijah. He was giving Elijah a new assignment to anoint a king. He also gave the prophet a new friend, Elisha. And very importantly, God gave Elijah a new hope. He wasn't alone. There were 7,000 others who still followed the Lord like he did. He wasn't alone. He thought he was alone. He felt alone. And he was getting all depressed because of it. And he just wanted to die. But there were 7,000 others who also were faithful. Let God give you a new purpose and a new direction. He's not through with you. The point is this. Even in the silence, God is there. He wants you to move toward him so that he can touch you and whisper to you and send you on a new mission in life. Now let me ask you, are you moving toward God? Do you know him? Do you have a personal relationship with him through Jesus Christ? Have you come to that place in your life where you realized and acknowledged that you're a sinner, rebellious to God, and that you deserve his punishment? Have you come to the place of understanding that Jesus Christ died for your sin? You deserve to die for your sin as punishment and to spend an eternity in hell. But God sent Jesus Christ, for God so loves the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We deserve to perish. We deserve to die and spend an eternity in hell as punishment for our sins. But God loved us so much that he gave Jesus Christ to die on the cross, to pay for our sins, to take our punishment, to shed his blood as payment for our sin so that we wouldn't have to spend an eternity in hell as punishment, but that we would be able to, by faith, receive the payment that he made in our place as payment, as penalty as punishment for our sin and that we might be forgiven and God promised because of Jesus and what he did on Calvary's cross promised to forgive us and to give us eternal life so that we can spend eternity with him do you know him do you have that relationship have you acknowledged your sin have you confessed that sin and acknowledged to God that you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for you and that he rose from the dead. And because he rose from the dead, that power that he demonstrated over death, he can give you that you can have power over death for eternal life. And have you reached out and asked him to forgive you and be your savior? Do you know Jesus Christ? Well, you can. If you don't, all you have to do is... Simply pray. Acknowledge your sin and ask Jesus to forgive you, believing that he died for you and he rose from the dead. Ask God to save you today. So are you moving toward God? Are, can, can you hear God? Are you in a place where he can speak to you? Are you listening for his voice? Are you all the noise. Let that all settle. Let that all fade out. That you can hear his still small voice speaking to you. All the noise. All the wind of this world. All of the earthquake of the stuff that goes on in this world. All the fire of the, of the things and the pressures and the deadlines and all that. All that fade away. And your 
quiet place and listen for his still, small voice? Are you listening for his voice? And then, are you obedient when God speaks? What does he want you to do? What is that new assignment? See, he never leaves us up on the mountaintop. We go there to engage him, but we, he never leaves us there. He always sends us back down off the mountain to serve his people. What's the assignment that he has for you? What has he spoken to you in these last days? these last hours, these last weeks and months? What has he spoken to you that you need to do? How, how has he told you that you need to do ministry? What new way has he called you to serve him? And where will you serve? What is that new assignment? Where will it take you? Is it a new way in the same place? Or is it to move to a new place? What is that assignment? Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your servant, Elijah, who we can learn so much from his life, from his ministry. Father, and when we come to those places in life when we just feel like we're all alone to get depressed and feel like there's everything is against us and there's no one else. Thank you that we're reminded that there are others, that we're not by ourselves, that there are many other brethren who are going the same way as us, who are dealing with the same things. And Father, help us to find that place where we can get away from all the noise and listen for your voice. That we can get quiet and listen. And help us to listen carefully, to hear the instruction, and give us the grace that we might, in obedience, be empowered to do what you call us to do. And may we willingly take the assignment that you've given to us to serve you in maybe a, a totally new way totally new place. Father, may it all be for your praise and for your glory. Father, speak to our hearts and give us the grace to act upon what you tell us. Father, we just place all this before you in the name of our precious Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord bless you.